Welcome to the 2023 coverage of the Super Squad National Sporting Clays Championship. I'm Jason Rambo from the Dead Pair Podcast. And I'm Justin Barker sitting here right next to you. And Jason, we've got 80 of the best shooters in the whole country gathered up right here to shoot on one rotation for the national championship. And that's pretty impressive. You know, everybody here, are sh- they're shooting in the same conditions. They're shooting with with someone just as good as they are right behind them and right in front of them. That's going to make this pretty good. Anthony Matteris out of Pennsville, New Jersey. Owns m M&M. Hunting Preserve and Sporting Clay Course. Anthony, Anthony may be one of the most well-known sporting clay shooters in the whole country, maybe in the world. Uh, his coaching business, his fishing charter, he, he's a really, really busy guy. And uh, there's one thing that he knows how to do. Well, he knows how to do everything. But right here, is he knows how to move a shotgun, and his stats will prove it. Absolutely. Has instructional videos, even wrote the book on sporting clays. Yeah. He did, didn't he? Yes, sir. I don't know when he had time to write a book. I don't know how Anthony has time to shoot right now. That is true. The amount of focus these guys have when they're in the cage is just... uh, I don't know how I could ever bring that, Justin. If you find out, buddy, will you let me know? No, I I could bring some... I could bring something to the cage, but it won't be focus. (laughs) I could bring a pocket full of shells and a gun. Right. And try to get to where these guys are. I don't know if it'll ever happen. Here's Austin Keemstead right here out of Texas. He's uh, he's an Aggie. And uh, is in, I think, Jason, he's right there three targets behind the lead right now. Yeah. Yeah, he shot amazing all weekend. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see what he does here to finish out this green course. Yeah. I mean, the amount of you're, – you're standing in with this group of people right here. The amount of pressure that you have – just standing around you. All right. All of these guys are within three or four targets of each other, and you know every single target counts. And you have that in the back of your mind while you're trying to shoot this stuff. Yeah. That's where I fall apart. Well, you know, I was pretty fortunate when I shot this course. Uh, the weather was really nice, uh, it was calm. Uh, we shot it actually earlier this morning, and it was, like I said, the, the sun was out, the wind was calm. Uh, the targets were still tough. What these guys are dealing with right now, you can see the flags whipping. I mean, I, to be honest with you, I saw lines change on targets all the way around this thing. I just don't know how they how they were able to do it. Yeah, right here shooting, we have Bane Horn. He is a veteran out of Texas. Now, I, I've never heard of Bane. Bane shows up, and he's three targets off the lead. Unbelievable. He's a veteran that came out of nowhere, it almost seemed like. And, you know, maybe just, Justin, you and I are a little guilty of being somewhat green to the sport. And, you know, I'm sure the man's done a lot of impressive things. But up until this weekend, I personally had not heard of him. But I'll tell you what, I watched him shoot, and his skills are absolutely at the top level of this game. Yeah, and his attitude shows you right there. You can tell he walks off fist bumping. It's it's really impressive that we've talking about the sportsmanship of the of the of shooting and you can clearly see it right here oh, here's yeah. your leader brandon powell right out of reynolds georgia something i've noticed about brandon and his shooting jason i want to i want to bring this up when brandon figures out from what i can tell by watching when he figures out where He's going to shoot these targets. The shells come out of the gun. New shells come in the gun. It comes right back up, and he's calling pull again. Yeah, there's no it, time in between. Exactly, and I was going to make the same comment. It's like there's no pre-shot routine. Once he's dialed, it's time to go to work, and he just doesn't stop until he's, you know, his four pairs are done. Looks like Austin Keemstead's moved up to the second-place spot right there and moved Bain Horn down to the third-place spot. Still very close. All right, we've caught up with Madison Sharp on Station 8. Madison has been able to perform very strong this week and keep her focus. As you can see here, she is sitting on a 210, which is five targets over Karen Miles. The rest of the field is slightly behind. That amount of focus and determination and performance that she's had up to today has really, really helped put her into this lead. Seeing Austin again. 
right there at the top, has a good chance to win the national championship. Game on the back of his vest. Bane, Bane Horn sitting right there beside him. I, it looks like they're getting some show pairs maybe. Or right, they're next up in the stand. Yeah, I think they're waiting on the on the trapper to shuffle the cards through. Just cracks me up about Bane. I mean, guy shows up in a T-shirt, no sponsorships, and just, man, he could, that, that guy can move a shotgun. Yes, he can. All of them here can, Jason, remember? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, to me, I, you know, I was there accounted and present for the whole time, and I could still watch these guys shoot over and over again. The, the amount of focus, the smooth that, you know, their move to a target is just, it's, it's like watching a symphony. Austin shooting a blazer. Another blazer. Seeing shooting. a lot of guys come up shooting shooting these blazers. Uh, they'll start shooting them early, and uh, they stay with them. Yeah, in fact, years ago, David Radulovich, one of his first over unders was a uh, was a blazer. That's right. I don't know how I'd, I'd react to that rabbit right there, Jason. I think I would be. I don't. I don't know how. I, I think if I missed it on the first go round, I'd probably just fall apart and miss it every time. That's just the way I am. <laughs> well, with all the chips out there and the wind blowing, I'm telling you what. About every third rabbit or fourth rabbit, that thing would take a hop, and it seemed like right as somebody pulled the trigger, that thing would hop right over their pattern. And I saw more people cuss at that thing than any other bird on the course. <laughs> Me being one of them. Oh yeah. Jason, this rabbit that's coming from the left. Yeah. And then you got a right quarter and bird coming up, right? So you, your gun's down. You're following this rabbit. You pull the trigger, and then you got to move up to a target that's flying up in the air. You know, that transition from one target to the next like that sometimes gets people. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what this course seemed to be all the way around. It wasn't that the individual targets were over the top. It was the transition between the two, whether they were report or true pairs. Uh, it was a, they they tested your move. Let's put it that way. Yeah, and the wind doesn't add anything to it. But oh no, that made it easier. <laughs> <laughs> easier for me to miss. Yeah. Well, you know, you, you you wouldn't think the wind bothered these guys as much as it really does by just watching them. It's it's crazy to watch someone of this on this level shoot targets well i think it's it all boils back to experience too you know um again let's let's watch brandon here from the start and like you said justin it, it just once he's got once he's got his plan down and he executes the first pair he does not slow down nope he thinks about it right there before he puts on that before he calls for that first pair he'll smash the targets or shoot at them at least and it's right back to the same thing again. but you know even though we're we're commenting here on Brandon and how fast he goes through the pairs, one thing I noticed about him is when he does miss a target, he can make a, a mental correction in his plan and never slow down. Yeah. He can still keep going just that fast. I miss a target. I sit there, you know. Well, first I got to go pick my gun up because I threw it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I have a hard time, but the, the, again, I think it boils, a lot of it boils back to experience with these guys is they're able to make a correction on the fly, and you don't see them miss that target again. Very rarely will they miss the same target twice. All right, here we go. Anthony back up. Jason, you talked about him writing a book earlier. Anthony has a ton of experience in this sport, and I've, I've mentioned before, you can take that book that he has written literally out on the course with you in any presentation that you see. All you have to do is look back in reference to it and he'll tell you how to hit it he knows a ton about he, this sport he should have renamed it like the sporting clay's bible i mean yeah. the information that's in that book is just amazing yeah yeah and he's taken all of his i mean you know anthony's a, a multi-time world champion national champion the u.s open champion if it's out there he's probably won it regionals all over the country and uh he uh he's taken that experience and his knowledge and put it into a book and that book, you can buy that book anywhere near about and, and learn, listen to some, or read some cool stories and, and also read about how he has done what he's done. Man has an amazing history in the sport and continues to make history in the sport. 
Okay, Jason, you see right there the leaderboard just popped up, and it looks like Brandon's one up from where we started on the on the rest of the squad. So he's picked up four as far as wow, you know, he started incredible. with three up. Now he's four up. Just think of the pressure that that puts on these shooters. Take a look at Desi Edmonds here getting out of the cart. She's a former national champion. You can see Madison Sharp is still at the top of the leaderboard for the ladies. Yeah, Madison is uh, from South Carolina. She is a very uh, – she's, she's, it seems like over the past few years she's gotten really, really, really good at it. And she's sitting there like you can see over the, over the golf cart just, just thinking, watching what these other girls are doing. And uh, I don't know how that would bother me. I think that would bother me a pretty good bit, knowing that I'm up in the lead or up in the leader's group and watching all these other girls hit all these targets. Um, again, I think that's part of the super squad, you know. Uh, that's why these competitors like it so much. They're they're shooting with the girls that, and guys that they have to beat, and they know when they miss one or if their competitor misses one, they, they kind of they know where they're at. And – that pressure, they just thrive on it. Yeah. Kayla right here, she's from Texas. She's a junior shooter. Uh, one of the younger ones in the crowd. And you see Kayla and her dad traveling around a lot to these places and, and shooting these tournaments. And I have I saw her coming up with an automatic a long time ago, and and uh, looks like she's really improved. Turning around, fist bump, just like everybody else. Congratulating you. Good job. And then the next squad comes up. Even though they've been watching from behind, the closer you get to the stand, or the if you're standing to the left or right of the stand, the targets always move. The closer you get, the easier they look or the harder they look. You never can sit in a cart and tell how you're going to shoot a target. Yeah, for sure. And that's you know that goes back to the station we were looking at with the fence right next to it, you know. I didn't. I wasn't standing in the box for the show pair. So when I was standing back, I kind of thought I had a whole point picked out. And when I got in the box, I got beat. It's amazing yeah. how the depth perception, everything changes just in a few feet. Yeah. I think I'm trying to. I'm getting in somebody's way if I get up there too close to them. You know what I'm saying? See how they're standing yeah. next to one another right here? I just feel like I'm in somebody's way. Remember Wendell Cherry making the comment when he was bringing David up through the ranks, he would be, he'd be standing in the box looking at his show pair, and he would go to his left a little bit, and there was David's hand right next to his face. He was so close to him. He thought he was going to poke him. <laughs> he still does that. He still does that, yes. Yep. Desi from Savannah, Georgia. Uh, Rocking that A400. I think she's got a little experience here. She's won one or two of these. Yeah, yeah. I'd hate to see the room that her and Zach keep all the trophies in. It's probably bigger than my garage. Well, it's more Desi's trophies and Zach's, but, I mean, it's still a big room. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're getting a phone call for that one. Yeah. No, I like messing with Zach. Super, super shooter and a super coach. You know, you're talking about Desi here and the automatic. You know, she kind of started with the automatic, ran the the DT11 over under for years, and went then went back to the automatic again. I guess it's all in what you're comfortable with, Justin. Yes, yeah, Desi's shooting a one ounce twelve fifty load. When it's matched with that automatic, you know the recoil is just there's there's probably zero recoil coming out of that gun or felt recoil that she can feel while she's shooting, and that's important when you're trying to go from one target to the next. If that recoil's great and you have to move your gun a lot, you know, it can affect that second shot. But when you have a gun with a light load in it and there's not a lot of recoil, it makes ob obtaining that second target quickly a lot easier. Yes. Karen Miles here. Station You talk nine. about somebody done set sporting plays on fire. Oh, Karen wow. Miles. Karen and Gavin Miles. Uh, they uh, they coach. I don't know if they coach together, but I know they both coach and uh, have an online series where you can subscribe and and learn some of their tricks. Both out of Arizona. She's probably used to shooting in a little wind, wouldn't you say? Uh, yeah, but I bet you the temperature's a little warmer. This station <laughs> here was pretty tricky. The 
<coughs> excuse me, the second target was off the tower there on the left. And now that booger was hard to read. It was uh, closer than you thought, at least it, what I, <laughs> the way I shot too far out in front of it. Uh, but it was moving slow, and it was at a distance, and it was definitely deceiving. I always have a problem with lines coming off of a, of a getting the line of the target when it's coming off of a tower like that. But these people don't. They pick them right up, seems like. I, get, I might be cross-eyed, Jason, when I'm looking up that way after looking for the sec, the first one that I missed. Well, if you heard all the problems my odd doctor told me, you think I would just go take up golf or something, you know? So. Don't you have to look at the ball? Uh, well, not the way I golf. So. <laughs> you just swing in, the, air, in the, uh, uh, the area that the ball's in? Yeah, it's a swing and a miss. It's kind of like baseball and golf all in one. We talked about Madison Sharp a few minutes ago, a Remington shooter and a Krieg off shooter. Uh, out of South Carolina, went to Clemson, and she's really taken up the uh, Winchester Championship Tour here, ending it at the National Championship. That's one That's one right there I don't want to shoot against. I can tell you that. No, she's very determined, very focused, very driven. She handles that Krieg off just as smooth as silk. Yes, she does. Justin, you and I look like kamikaze fighters out there with swords trying to hit these targets. <laughs> Waving them out there. We kind of look like Brad Kidd before he shoots. Here's a shooter from your neck of the woods. Shelby Moon. Shelby Moon puts the gas down in them barrels. I'm going to tell you right now. That girl will shoot some stout shells, and she'll shoot them fast. And when she hits them, you have no idea where they were at because they're gone. Out in the eighth shooter. Oh, yeah. Coaches out of the meadows down here in Forsyth, Georgia, Dominic Bethel's place. Shelby's a really, really good shooter. Yes, she is. I actually shot with her at the meadows during the Trident Cup, and I was just – Again, amazed how well she can shoot. Yeah, don't think you're going to beat her, Jason. No, 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 no. I, that went out the window after the first station. I'll tell you a little statistic about Shelby that you probably don't know. Shelby used to shoot competitive archery. What? Yep. I did not know that. She can't get you with a bow. She'll get you with a shotgun. So pretty much just don't mess with the gal. Yeah, don't mess with her. <laughs> Amazing shooter, though. See the scores coming up here. Madison Sharp pulled out a little bit of a lead with a 221. Karen's three back with a 218. And then, of course, you have Desi and Shelby with a 211. Halen's got a little bit of a hill to climb, 12 back. Jason, this right to left crosser right here. It's like a little tricky one. It is. It's very tricky. And there's one thing we haven't talked about with Anthony. He actually injured his middle finger on his trigger hand leading up to this event, literally the day before he left to head to the National Shooting Complex. So he was dealing with some issues himself, had some swollen fingers, a little, little difficult to grip the gun. Yeah. I don't know how – I don't think – I think you could take away all my fingers and it's still – I still end up, end up the same, really. Yeah, I don't think it would help or hurt me either way. <laughs> Austin Keemstead back in the box. He's a game board shooter, uh, like we talked about with his blazer. He's really smooth also. Uh, so Austin's put up some big scores this year in places he's went. Uh, you know, and it's uh, being in college and shooting at a level like this, it's just it's really hard to believe. You see Brandon's caught up, and I'm going to tell you what right now. One of the things I noticed about all of these shooters, but especially with Brandon, he would walk back and forth while he was waiting on his turn to shoot. He would walk back and forth and get every angle and take every look at every target he could at that station. He wouldn't just walk up and stand behind the shooter. Okay, we got Austin shooting these targets right here, this right-to-left crosser. You know, uh, being in school full-time, being a – 
a, sh- a shooter at the level that he's at. Uh, it's really unbelievable that he's he's as good as he is when he has all this other stuff going on. He's traveled the country, done really well. Right here, he's dropped to, moved him to the third spot, and uh, shot Bain back up into second place. Right now, going into the next station. You think he has it figured out, Jason? Oh, I promise you. It's going to be the same thing again. Load them in. Look at that. Pull it up. Incredible. Hey, why change it if, you, if you're doing it? My problem, what I have to always right. think about is what I got to do different because I'm always missing them. <laughs> he just tries to keep doing the same thing because he keeps hitting them. Look at how fast he engaged those two targets. Yeah. Incredible. I'd say he had it figured out pulling into the parking lot more than I ever will. Who would you say the biggest crowd, what group of people is the biggest crowd behind? I'm assuming the leaders group. Yeah, for sure. Um, it was kind of it was kind of a mixed bag until they got on to about station seven or eight, and then everybody was congregating there. And it was kind of like kind of like it was last year, Justin. You know, everybody just – gathered around in big crowds and uh it was it was really neat to see yeah hey he's he's hitting them just as fast as the rest were that's for sure you know there's one thing about all these top shooters at the top of this game it's not that one's more talented than the other it gets down to who makes the least amount of mistakes over four days that's right Anthony, former national and world champion. He knows how to move that gun. He knows how to break those targets. It's just that he's made a couple of mistakes throughout the week that have put him back from what the leader is right now. I would think these guys shooting behind Brandon, Anthony, uh, Austin, you know, they're all shooting together. But seeing two guys run the station – probably makes you feel a little better knowing that the targets can be hit consistently you see what i'm saying if it don't put pressure on you it might put a little bit of pressure on you where you have to check yourself well see that's where when i'm shooting with my squad and the people that are in my class and if i watch somebody run that station in front of me i know that i cannot drop anything there even worse than what i did going into it you know so for me it puts more pressure on a lot of times I'll actually not watch. Just like Braxton Oliver, he actually will not watch anybody shoot. He'll watch the show pair, and then he goes and hides. Can't tell here, Justin. Is that a high rib or is it a mid rib? That's a high rib. Is he shooting that backwards from what everybody else was doing, Jason? I believe he is. He's going high-low, and everyone else was going low-high. funny you say that because sean alley the guy i do the podcast with him and i were squatted together we actually talked about that which one would take first and i said ah, i think i want to take the low one first and it didn't work out so well i had to switch it around i was managed to break the pair but i had to switch it around and go the other way all right there's the leaderboard looks like the score has moved up but the, the the standings are still the same uh everybody done good there it's like bane's grabbing his cards walking off to the cart uh, to get on to the next station. Looks like Madison Sharp's still in the lead here. She's actually pulled one target up on Karen. That's still a pretty tight race there, Justin. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it's actually pressure on both because Ma- Madison knows yeah. she's got to keep that lead and Karen knows she can't miss. Kind of like my finances, always up. operating in the deficit. You ever walked up one of them stairs and tripped, Jason? Don't don't ask me that while we're recording, Justin. You know, you know I'll make a fool out of myself even worse than I already do. <laughs> but thanks. Now I'm They built be- those rails super tough. They built those rails right there super strong just for people like me and you walking up there wanting to lean on well, them. You just made me conscious. I'm going to be gripping that rail really like a death grip going up it now. <laughs> Shelby Moon, as you can see, was on Team USA. 
traveled overseas this year to shoot. She shot everywhere. Shelby's got a lot of experience, all these girls do, with uh, shooting abroad, shooting here, and stiff competition. You see, by the way, the rotation worked out. These girls are back here on one. Looks to me like the wind's starting to pick up a little bit more here. You look at the flags, they're whipping a little harder than what they were earlier. All right, on you. We talked about this station earlier, Jason. What do you think? Do you think most people did fairly well here? Um, I actually saw quite a few drops on the first target that she just engaged right there. The lead was deceiving. Um, I know when I shot it, I overled it the first time I shot it. Um, and I actually watched that carry through. Um, even even at some of these shooters on top of the on top of the game here, even a couple of them dropped that first target. Of course, then again, they have to win the deal with that I didn't at that time. There she is. We talked about her earlier, Shelby Moon. I think Shelby shot that Nailed same down. gun, Jason, since she started shooting. When she started shooting, I think she had that gun. Really? I think. She's going to probably get on to me if I'm wrong. But, yeah, I think I think she's been shooting that gun a long time. She moves it well. And one of the only people out here, I believe, shooting a TSK stock, which is an adjustable stock. Those stocks are... Great for anyone that's coming up and adjusting their fit, especially a youth that continues to grow. We see quite a few of those, don't we, Dustin? Oh, yeah. There's a ton of youth shooters coming up. Desi Edmonds back on the mound with that big double A on the back of her vest. She has no recoil on that gun. None. None. Zero. And she's super nice. That's the thing about Desi. She's always in – I've shot with Desi. She's always in a good mood even if she's missing targets. Well, my gosh, you'd have to be to live with Zach. <laughs> Wait, Justin, can we edit that part? Zach's going to hear that. <laughs> oh, he knows. See, Karen's got a little different setup on her pre-shot routine. She'll actually close her gun and mount it and kind of go through the motions one time before she loads. I don't see too many people doing that, but she obviously works for her. She's very successful. Oh, yeah. She knows how to move that. That uh, That's a high rib gun, too, that, that she's shooting. Yeah, her and her husband, Gavin, both shoot high rib Krieg offs. Obviously, to a lot of success. Uh, oh, yeah. You see there, Justin, you were just asking me about this this pair right here at this station. She just dropped that first one. That, that target is very deceiving. Madison's right here if she didn't miss any. So that's just added pressure that's putting on herself. Um, in which, in my situation, that would just cause me to miss more. Yeah, I would just start patterning my gun on the side of the trailer there. <laughs> As you can see, Karen's got herself in quite a deficit here, six targets back. It's hard enough to get back a one or two target deficit, so she's definitely got her work cut out for her. This was another tricky pair. So this, the target on the left, the first target you get pops up over the bushes right here and heads and, you know, it's quartering out away from you. And then you have following that, this report pair, following that you'll have a right to left. That's kind of doing the same thing, but in, instead of having that bush there, you get to see the full line of the target. Yeah. Coming out of the trees, coming out from behind a fence, it just bothers me. 
and your shooting power lines are right there. Yep. Remember, we end at station 10. We're on station 5. So Brandon really has to make a, some mistakes here if, if these guys want to ease up on him for the national championship. And I don't know that he's going to do that. Maybe I spoke too you soon. Tell about the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he let one go there. Now, there's a leaderboard. As you can see, Brandon's five ahead of really the rest of the pack. I mean, they're pretty much tied. So uh, heading to the next station, close. Still looking at that rabbit to the right. I'm telling you, that thing's got a rocket strapped to it. The only thing worse than a fast quarter and rabbit is a true pair quarter and rabbit. <laughs> yeah, we've had that trick played on us a few times. Oh, yeah. But you know the, the thing I like about Austin, watching him shoot all the way around this course, is his demeanor doesn't change. From station one all the way to the end, you know, he, he tilted his head there, he missed the target, but he, he doesn't. You don't see him cracking up. You don't see him getting mad. It's just, it's just even keel all the way around the course. So when he walks out of the stand, you don't know if he's hit him or missed him, basically. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, me, you, you know exactly what just happened. Trust me. <laughs> but not with Austin. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you right there. I could not tell if he hit him or missed him as far as the way he acted when he turned out of the, out of the box. So we've seen, what, just a few people shooting these high rib guns. Uh, most people are shooting the flat ribs now, but there are still some that believe in that high rib and love it, like Bane. Well, you know, Justin, you and I both started off with high ribs. Uh, in fact, uh, Sean, the guy I do the podcast with, he, he shot a high rib up until about eight months ago. And for me, it was a better transition back down to the – I actually shoot a mid rib now. I think you're in a flat rib, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. I don't. I shoot a flat rib gun. The last one, I got Everybody. rid of my high rib. I got it tangled up in the trees one time when I was walking out of the box, and I just said, I need to get rid of this thing. <laughs> you don't like having an extension ladder on top of your barrels? Uh -uh. Look at him smiling. He's just enjoying himself, and it, it's just its so funny to me. I mean, the guy, we haven't seen him the last few years at the top like this and just basically comes out of nowhere and enjoying himself. Here we come with the leader up right now. Looks like he's moving his gun awful faster to me on that second target than the other shooters were. Brandon's a swing through shooter. So he does come from behind the bird a little bit more than what everybody else does. Brandon and his whole family's here. His girlfriend, yeah. Tiffany, and their kids trying to see if he can take on this national championship. You know, Anthony's another one. You could you just about paint a picture of him in Station 1 and, and paint the same picture on 10, you know? Justin, have you noticed it's getting a little darker? I have. There's a storm of brewing, my friend. Looks that way. I don't know if it's in the sky or on the course, but there's one that's a brewing. <laughs> Might be two a brewing. Yeah. Jason, when you when you have a gun that fits perfect, this is what it looks like when it shoots. Zero recoil. Yeah. Something these guys are really, really big on. They fine tune every aspect of that. That that gun is an extension of their hands. It's not something that they're holding. 
Brandon's still five up over Austin. And uh, looks like Joe is two below Dominic and Bain. Moving on to the next station. Madison's still maintaining a five-point lead over Karen. Karen was able to pick one target back up. Uh, Desi and Shelby tied at a 232, and Halen's sitting at a 230. I mean, the girls are starting to tighten it up. However, Madison is able to maintain that focus and that strength that she had all week long to get her to where she's at now. Walking off to her cart, kind of keeping to herself, making sure she stays in the right state of mind as the other girls are shooting. You see, now I can't, I can't stay wrapped up that tight. I got to live it up a little bit, you know. But some people, that's what it takes. I'm proud of how good Shelby's done this year. Shelby's Shelby's really, really turned it on. Actually, past couple of years, Jason on this target right here, this right to left crosser, mm -hmm. or this quarter in target, I guess you'd call it. Watch how fast Shelby takes it. Well, you know that's good on her because, like I said, it dove really fast, and the wind was making it dance even more. So good on her to be able to take that target that soon. Madison's still in the lead. Karen was able to pick up yet another target. However, look here. Megan is now jumped over Halen Hanks for that fifth place spot with a 236. Station eight. Remember, we got two left. Every shot counts. Got Brandon leading this one off. But, you know, Jason, Brandon really performs under pressure well. He always has. I think that's been the thing I've noticed the most about Brandon over the last couple of years is the more pressure he has, almost like, you know, a guy coming back when the chips are down or however you want to however you want to phrase it. When the pressure's on for him, he really performs at his best. Has a no bird See, on there the he second. Took that, no bird on the second yeah, target. I was just getting ready to say, he took that like it didn't even phase him, you know. Just grab another shell and move on. Walks out, and Anthony walks in. Jason, do you think you would shoot any better if you shot with these guys all the time? I want to say yes, but these guys have missed more targets than you and I will ever see. So, I mean, they, they put so many years of work into getting to where they're at. Obviously, we would shoot better, but I don't think we would ever be at their level. That recoil on that gun is no, – that, that, his gun has amazed me this whole tournament. Yeah, there's zero recoil. Do you know if Anthony has went down to the one ounce or is he still shooting ounce and eight? He started shooting one ounce uh, uh, 100% of the time. I believe it was the beginning of last year. So, yeah, he's been shooting one ounce 1290s. And they hit him just fine. Oh, yeah. Out with eight. Anthony runs the station. A little bit more pressure now on Brandon, right? Oh, yeah. He knows he can't mess up. And these other guys are the same. You've got Austin right here. You know, I mean, he can't drop them either. I mean, it's really, really close. It's amazing at how close these guys shoot as far as point or scores are concerned. You know what's cool, though? You, you asked about shooting with these guys. I think that's the, the awesome thing about our sport is you can shoot with the very best in the sport, and, they, and they'd love to shoot with you. You know, I don't think you're going to take your family sedan out on the track with Jeff Gordon anytime soon. No. Well, he don't race anymore, so no. But um, Well, you know what I mean. I mean, it's just it, compared to other sports, right? I, mean, I, know, I know what you mean, yeah. 
yeah, they don't they don't mind shooting with you at all. And if you know you get up shooting with one of these guys and you miss, like me and Jason do, they're not going to sit there and laugh at you. All they're going to do is try to help you. Yeah. Anybody watching this that's interested in getting into this sport, there's several different avenues. Very easy to get into. Just please don't call and want to kill Justin and I for uh, talking you into a sport that's going to cost you some money. <laughs> it's fun. It's a good family sport, something that your kids can do, uh, you, you and your wife can do, your girlfriend, whatever it is. Uh, everybody enjoys it. Everybody's super nice. Everybody's helpful and friendly, and it's always it's always fun to go to tournaments. If you don't know quite what you're doing, people will be glad to help you. A lot of great people. I don't think you'll meet a finer group of people in any other sport. Here we go. Brandon's still up by three, and now Dominic slipped into that number two spot. Those those two, three, four, and five spots are all tight right there. You cannot miss a target. Remember, you got a winner, a runner-up, and a third-place finisher. So them guys, even if they don't catch Brandon, they still have that second-place and third-place spot that they can win. Brandon's still up three. Is like a, like we were talking earlier, second, third, fourth, and fifth are all neck and neck right there. Here comes up Dominic Grossi, who's sitting in second place right now. And he has to capitalize on these targets to to hold his spot or he's gonna drop off. You notice Dominic's another one that his demeanor doesn't seem to change a whole lot from station to station or pair to pair. He's dropped one, Ooh, dropped dropped one there. One there. <laughs> you see there, the wind took that target right out from underneath of him. He hit the second one, missed the first one. That wind really has an effect on these these targets flying through the air. Out with five. That now that's going to drop him down. But you rem remember, we've got the rest of the squad to shoot here. As the leading squad walks up here to shoot this this station where. Um, not a lot of people here recently have been hitting the second target coming from that tower. It's going to be interesting to see where the scoreboard lies after this station's over with. See Brandon Powell, the leader, kind of pacing in the background. Yeah, Brandon's, like I said, he's very observant on that. He won't just stand in one spot and watch the targets. He's going to move all around and get every angle he can to look at those things. That's something that actually Anthony's very good at, too. Like Anthony's Anthony doing okay here. here. Dropped one there. I think I spoke too soon for him. And he he drops <laughs> two. With that. Ooh. See the frustration on his face. Wow. Well, 
you know, Justin, the the next station. The next station, again, the trap is on that same tower facing the opposite way. I thought it was substantially harder than this. Oh, goodness. These guys don't want to miss, I promise you. This is where you make up ground on your competitors right here. If you see them missing and you get up there and run the station, especially in the situation these guys are in, it can really – it could it – could, Change the whole tournament. Yes, absolutely. See how Bane handles this station here. Makes you want to shoot that tower, doesn't it, Justin? Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've seen people shoot it quick, late, and it don't. It seems like the same outcome. Whoa. Frustrating to be in this situation. Do as well as they're doing and get here and drop two or three targets. I can assure you Brandon's going to be watching over his shoulder right here on this on this pair. Whoa. Okay, so Bane drops two there. Let's see what our leader does here. You know, Brandon's always like that big, long, hard stuff. Let's see how he does with this target. He's smiling. Oh, my goodness. Two dead pairs in a row. Wow. I'd be excited if I hit all those two, wouldn't you, Jason? Absolutely. The big thing is, is he just pulled out two additional target lead on Dominic. This is incredible. Going into the last station here. I mean, that's the first guy. Something. We watched that station for, with two squads, and he's the first one to run it. Heading into the ladies' final station here, Station 7. Wow. Look at this. Look at these scores here, Justin. They cannot drop. If if Karen Miles is shooting now, Madison's behind her. If she drops one and Madison Dutton, she's she just gave up the championship, so she's got to be real careful, careful here. I think you just jinxed her, Justin. Oh. Yeah, I hate I did that. Madison, the leader, really, is up here. Yeah, this is a really tricky station. She don't but have it won yet, that's for sure. Wow, that's incredible. This is a report pair of trap teals. And she is hitting that first target on the way down. I don't know if me and you can wait that long, Jason. I, I don't think I could. And there she tried to take it on the way up. Look at there. Look at there. She has just bested Karen by one target. Unbelievable. The way it looks now... Jason, that's that's your ladies' national champion right there. 
Well, congratulations to Madison Sharp. That is awesome. Second place man up right now, Dominic Grossi. But guess what? Third is Austin Keemstead with the same score. So Dominic's really got to watch what he does here. I don't know if you noticed or not, but Brandon's carrying a six-point lead going into this station. And this is a six-bird station. Seven. Seven bird. Sorry, seven, seven bird with that extra that extra target. So he could basically hit that single and drop all the pairs and still tie it up. Right. We know Brandon won't do that, though. Well, I don't think. <laughs> well, if I was in that situation, I still wouldn't bet on me. So, <laughs> There's Neil Chadwick, the target setter. Going into this last station, I'm, I have to say that I've really enjoyed this super squad coverage. Um, I like seeing Austin up there, uh, you know, college kid. I like seeing Bain Horn up there. Um, somebody new to us, maybe not to the sport, but to us he is. And uh, It's been really cool to watch these guys shoot. You notice the one person we haven't seen stuff up there yet? Who? Brandon. He's walking right now. He's pacing. That's right. Be interesting to see what he does on this station. Dead pair. Final pair. See the camera crew right there behind Austin getting all that footage of who we've been watching today, like we talked about earlier. Drops a tower target. Bane said he's just going to sit his gun down right here for just a second. Let me get my jacket off. I'm about to deal with these targets right here. I'll pick <laughs> it back up. There we go. Oof. That one hurt him. Only dropping one on the station. I'd say that's about as good as you could possibly run that station in these conditions. Your leader's stepping up now. Uh oh. Drops one. Look at the smile. I think at this point he's uncatchable, Justin. Yeah, he's uncatchable. And I'll tell you something that was that, that was super sportsmanlike right there was him walking off knowing that he's uncatchable and lets Anthony finish his shooting. Tell by the emotion. He knows what's setting in. It's starting to set in now what's just happened. Oh. 
former national champion coming up, Zach. Final fair. Giving Brandon a hug. Congratulating him. Anthony dropping two on the station. I think that about sums it up, right? There it is. Wow, look at that. Five target lead over Bain Horn, followed by Dominic Gross. What you of course, think? Austin and Anthony rounding out the top five. Think about this just for a second. 300 targets total. Brandon drops 13 over four days total. 13 targets. And it's the same way with the rest of the guys on that little leaderboard. Just a, a slight, I mean, think about that. That's not a lot of targets missed in these conditions over these few days. Very, very, very. Uh, a, a super job by all these guys and women. Yeah, and you're shooting 300 targets over four days and only dropping 13 total. That's that's saying something. I mean, I, I know people that are just amazing shots that can drop that in one course in one day, let alone over four courses in, you know, four days. Yeah, you and I would have dropped that in the first, probably the first 30 minutes. I was thinking of first three stations. Thank you, ma'am. So Kaylee caught up with your 2023 National Sporting Clays champion. Let's see what she has to say about it. Four days, each day a little different. Weather, targets, courses. How does today compare to the the past three days? Well, you know, Sunday's the the pressure day. You gotta you gotta finish it. It's hard to uh, put four solid days together. And you know, after having six runner ups out here, it's, it's been the one that I always thought would get away from me. And I came with the mindset to just shoot and you know, not try to protect any lead if I did get one and just let it happen and it did. Yeah, well, we can clearly see the emotion, your wife, your kids. What does it mean to have them right there watching you achieve something that you've been after for so long? It's the most long? important thing in the world. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. You work hard and it's about time, right? Yeah, it's been a long time coming. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll let you enjoy it. Congratulations. Thank you. And hopefully we'll catch up with you and once it all sits in. Thank you. Yep, congrats. All right, Jason, that's it. The 2023 coverage of the Super Squad is over, and uh, we've crowned a new national champion. Uh, the, I know we had bad weather, but, hey, we had a great turnout for the national championship this year. Yeah, this year brought its challenges, that's for sure. But it was it was intense all the way down to the end. We've crowned a new champion, and uh, I look forward to seeing you again next year, Justin. Yeah, man, it, we had a good time. I'd like to thank everybody that was involved with it, and uh, the film crew and the target setters, Michael Hampton Jr., uh, just everybody, all the vendors. Uh, we really appreciate everybody being at the national championship this year. And uh, remember, it's coming around again next year. Maybe it'll be bigger than it was this year. I think it will. You know, attendance was up again this year, another record-breaking year, and I think we're already looking for that next year. So until next year, everyone, I'm Jason Rambo. I'm Justin Barker. We'll see you next year. I hope you enjoyed watching our Super Squad program this year and hope to see you down in San Antonio in 2024. For more information, go to mynsca.com.